Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and in this video I will show you the best method for setting up a dual boot of Windows 10 Pro and Ubuntu 20 on your system. Now chances are that if you're using Linux as your daily driver, there will be some Windows software that you require that does not work in Wine or there isn't a Linux equivalent available. A perfect example of this is video games, especially ones developed for Windows and in particular competitive multiplayer games that use some form of anti-cheat. I suppose you could argue to a lesser extent proprietary software such as Microsoft Office or the Adobe Creative Suite. Now I'll make the argument there are decent alternatives available on Linux, for example you've got LibreOffice and GIMP, but they're not 100% replacements, and thus using Jubooting in this scenario would be a wise idea. Now I personally use my Windows 10 installation for multiplayer games, and I also use it to connect to my Place of Works VPN, since I've not actually figured out how to do that on Linux yet. So before we start the installation of Ubuntu 20 or 4, there are a couple of things we need to check beforehand. The first thing we need to check is how, how has Windows 10 been previously installed? Now typically if you've got a new machine, then you will find it will be installed using UEFI. Alternatively, if it's an older machine, you'll find it will be using Legacy BIOS. Now the easiest way to check this is if you actually open up the administration tools uh, found in the control panel. I'm just going to swap that to there, Administration Tools. And we're looking for System Information. Now on the System Summary section, there should be a BIOS mode. So in my particular case, it's Legacy BIOS. Now, it's only saying that because I'm running this in VirtualBox, so a virtual machine. But you'll probably find in your scenario it'll be set up as UEFI. Now the reason this is important is because this will dictate how you install Ubuntu or your Linux distribution, as you can only dual boot between the two of them if both operating systems are installed the same way. So in other words, if you use Legacy BIOS for Windows, you have to use Legacy BIOS for Linux, and vice versa, you can't mix and match. The second thing we need to make a decision on is how you're actually going to install Ubuntu. Are you going to be partitioning a single hard drive or you're actually going to install it on a separate hard drive. I would strongly recommend using a second hard drive for Linux and the reason for this, for multiple of reasons, although the main reason is that both your operating systems will not touch each other's bootloaders. As historically certain Windows updates have overwritten the bootloader that comes with Linux and that causes that installation to no longer boot and thus you have to reinstall that bootloader with either a live or Linux recovery disk. However, if you've got both Windows and Linux on separate drives, you avoid this problem entirely. But if you do want to install both of them on a single hard drive, you do just need to create some space for the Linux distribution. Now the easiest way to do that is through Windows Disk Management. So if you do a search for disk in a control panel, go to create and format hard disk partitions. And as you can see on my particular setup, I have got two hard drives. I've got disk one and disk zero. This is my Windows one, this is the one I'm going to be using for my Linux distribution. So if you right click on the C drive, go to shrink volume, and then from there choose how much you want to shrink it down by. Bear in mind that when you actually come to the installation of Ubuntu, this free space is where you're going to be manually partitioning for the root, boot and home directory. Which can be difficult to understand for new users of, of Linux, which is another reason why I recommend just using a completely fresh disk. However, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you my recommended method, which is having Windows and Linux on two separate hard drives. So the installation process is pretty straightforward, but of course we need to first download the latest Ubuntu 2004 ISO and burn it to a USB flash drive. So to download it, you go to ubuntu.com, click on download, and you click on the 2004 LTS. And that will begin the process of downloading the ISO. So now we've downloaded the ISO, it's time to actually burn it to a USB flash drive. Uh, I recommend using Berlin Etcher for this purpose, as it actually works on Linux, Windows and Mac OS as well. One thing just to note, that once you've actually burnt the ISO to flash drive, you need to plug it in of course, restart, and then open the device boot menu. Usually it's pressing the F12 or F8 key, but it may vary depending on the motherboard. But more importantly, on the list of devices that appear, you would typically see a 2004 and a USB 2004, or something to that extent. Now this is important because the USB option is used for legacy BIOS, 
and the 2004 is used for UEFI. So make sure to choose the one that matches your installation of Windows. So the installation process is pretty straightforward. You obviously choose your language. You choose your installation type. In this case, I'm going with normal installation with install third party software. Uh, however, when you get to the installation type page, you want to make sure that you choose the option to erase disk and install Ubuntu option. And from here, you want to choose the drive we're going to install on. So in this case, we're going to be using the 30 gig drive. Click install now. And this just confirms what partitions are going to be made. These are the ones you would have had to do manually if you'd done the other method, which is partitioning up, up the original single drive. Click continue. Choose your locale. And the next step is to choose your user account. And it begins the process of installation. And once this process is now completed, you'll be prompted to remove the flash drive. So once you get the prompt, do so, and then reboot the system. Okay, so the installation is complete now. So let's click restart. And we should get a prompt in a second to remove the flash drive. Okay, so just done that. And here is the boot menu. So by default, the next time you will turn the computer on, you will be greeted with this. And this is how it gives you the option to boot it either into Windows, down at the bottom there, or straight into Ubuntu. So let's, do, let's boot into Ubuntu. And with that, you've successfully set up a due boot of Windows and Linux on a single system. And with that, it also brings the end to this video. So as always, thank you very much for watching. And if you did find this video helpful, please do leave me a like and also subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Thank you again, and no doubt I'll see you next time. Goodbye.